What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're gonna cover how to speed run to get ahead of the pack, choose your faction, and make a company within 30 minutes. So by following this guide, you're going to have first dibs at farming routes, company names, and gain a huge advantage to make lots of gold to capture settlements. So getting ahead of everyone is incredibly important. You don't want to be behind the pack because then everything is gone or depleted. You want to be in front of them. So to get started, here's what we need to do. First, skip the introduction in the town and then create your character. When you first create your character, you will not be able to skip the following cutscene, but use this time to prepare yourself to speed run through the tutorial. Now, after you wash up upon the shore, you're going to need to talk to Thorp and then complete the combat tutorial. After that, pick up Thorpe's items, put them on, and then you have a choice. If you run to the shielded enemy, you will get a free mastery point to unlock a skill. Or you can skip that and unlock that mastery point later. It's all up to you. Just know if you do run to the shielded enemy, this will add about 45 extra seconds to your run. And whether you kill this enemy or not, you're going to do the exact same thing. Press escape, click on the main menu, and then click continue to new world. This will immediately skip to the starting zone and we can start power leveling. Now, once you're here, collect five flint on the way to the quest giver. We're going to need these for an upcoming quest. It's much easier to do them on the way now than to try to go do it later. Now, side note, if you do spawn at Windsward or Monarch's Bluffs, you're going to have a much faster trip to your settlement than at First Light. First Light has a longer distance run. Now, another tip, make sure you are roll canceling everywhere you run to to increase your speed. So you need to roll and then halfway through your roll, unsheath or sheath your weapon. You'll instantly cancel the roll kind of recovery. Let your stamina tick up to 51 and then you'll be able to roll two more times. If you just roll immediately at 50, you'll only be able to roll once. If you roll at 51, you'll be able to roll two more times. These are the kind of min-max things. If you don't care, it doesn't matter, but these are the things that are going to help you get the edge and be able to speed past other players. Rinse and repeat this whole process, move quickly about the tutorial. So go ahead and talk to the quest giver and then complete the quest to kill three drowned. Once you're done, they did remove the respawn feature, so you can't use this to easily fast travel anymore. So now you either need to run back to the quest giver or just die. Now I would recommend only using the dying method when the distance is worth it. Like when you need to claim the ship flags on the next quest or after killing the corrupted, these are the type of things you need to know. So let's go ahead and move on. So the next quest is going to ask you to collect flint and wood nearby. Now you should already have the flint because we picked it up on the way to the quest giver. So you just need to collect five green wood from bushes and then return to the campfire. Now, once you're at the campfire, craft all of the flint tools because you're going to need them for the upcoming run to the settlement. They ask you just to do the skinning knife, do all of them. So after you craft the tools, you need to hunt a boar to craft rations. Go ahead and kill two boar and then skin them for rawhide. Again, you'll need this for a quest once we get to the settlement. So go ahead and head back, craft the rations, and then pick up the next quest and head to reclaim the flags. Toggle on your auto run and then use this time to spend attribute and mastery points. Now, once you've claimed both flags, let an enemy kill you and then respawn back at the watchtower. The next quest is going to send you to kill a corrupted boss. You should be level four at this point, so make sure to spend any points that you need to. Once you get and kill the boss, loot the chest. You should be level five. Take a moment to equip your secondary weapon and then put on any armor that you have. But please remember, keep your armor weight light. You want to be able to dodge roll. There's also a supply crate in this corrupted cave, so if you want extra resources, you can do that here. Now here you can let an enemy kill you or run back. It's not honestly that far if you go out the top entrance. Don't go out the same way you came in. Go up the slope behind the corrupted boss and then out the top of the cave and you'll drop down a couple of cliffs and then you'll be near the watchtower. So once you're back, hand in the quest and the next one you get will send you to the settlement. This is where you need to do a little bit of gathering to make sure that you're prepared to quickly hand in quests and not spend extra time searching for resources. This is why we also made all of the flint tools and not just the skinning knife. So on your way to the settlement, here is what you need to collect. 45 green wood, 40 stones, and 24 rawhide. Now these items are required to proceed, but there are some other resources you might want to collect along the way. If you see any herbs, make sure to go ahead and grab them. 
We need them to craft potions on the town project board for some big experience. It's easier to grab them now and then be able to craft those potions while you're in town, then get into town and then have to leave and then come back. So we're just trying to maximize our time here, right? Minimize the amount of trips we need to make. Also, if you see any iron, make sure to go ahead and just mine it. This has the exact same reason as herbs. You're going to need this for town project boards and it gives big experience early on. So once you reach the settlement, go ahead and turn in the quest and then pick up the next one. Now, most of the time you will turn this quest in near the project board. So make sure to stop by the project board, pick up any town projects you have. Make sure to focus on things that are like kill wolves, collect resources, do some crafting or find chests. Do not pick up anything related to fish because those are horrible experience in exchange for the time investment. You'll spend so much time trying to get fish fillets, fish oil, and the experience is not worth it. So after you grab all of the town projects you need, go ahead and head to the next quest giver and you're gonna complete the next series of quests, including the one where you need to craft some items using resources we gathered along the way here. This is why we spend the extra time to get the green wood, the stones, the rawhide. That way we don't have to leave camp and then come back. Also remember, keep dodge rolling everywhere to increase your speed and spend any mastery points you get on damage skills since you need to kill things quickly. Then go ahead and head out to kill the wolves at all the different caves. Then either die and respawn or run back. It's really up to you. And at this point, you should be level eight and ready to talk to the factions and make your faction choice. Once you choose your faction, remember to do the faction introduction quest. That way it opens up faction missions for you. And at this point, you can also join a company, a guild, and then start working towards that 100,000 gold investment to conquer a territory. What I plan on doing once I join my guild and my company is immediately hitting farming routes and start capitalizing on all of those because you can make an insane amount of gold in a very, very short amount of time. And if you wanna know some of the best farming routes you can get, I'm gonna be putting those on this channel. So be sure to keep your eyes locked because you're going to be able to earn 10,000 plus gold in a few hours and level up your mining and your harvesting from zero to 100 extremely quickly. So guys, I hope this helped. I know min-maxing isn't for everybody, speed running isn't for everybody. A lot of people are going to say, why don't you just sit back and enjoy the game? And I get that, and you can totally do that. You don't have to watch the video, you don't have to go through this method, but for those people who really want to get the edge on other people and who are extremely competitive, then this is the best way to spend your first 30 minutes. That way you can get started and conquer some territories. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. As always, this has been Vulcan, and I will talk to you guys next time.